to play it through and on this edition it's Mega Man 3 brought to us by Capcom. After Mega Man 2 for Game Boy was released, Kenji Inafune, one of the creators of Mega Man, wasn't too pleased with the way the game turned out, so he ended up going back to the developers of the first Mega Man game for Game Boy and let them create the series from then on. Mega Man 3 for Game Boy follows the same type of path that they did with the first two Mega Man games on Game Boy, featuring four Robot Masters to start with, and then four Robot Masters later on in the game. Since Mega Man 2 for Game Boy featured Robot Masters from both 2 and 3, this one actually has the four Robot Masters from 3 that did not appear there, and four Robot Masters from Mega Man 4 for NES. The storyline for Mega Man 3 on Game Boy is rather simple. Dr. Wily once again is trying to take out Mega Man. This time though his plan involves taking a coveted oil platform in the middle of the ocean to draw energy so he can create a new machine. Also during the game he sends Punk after Mega Man. Punk is a member of the Mega Man Killers, a special group of robots designed specifically to take out Mega Man and were featured in the Game Boy games. So here we go with Mega Man 3 for the Nintendo Game Boy. After starting up the game, we have four Robot Masters to choose from. We have Gemini, Shadow, Spark, and Dustman. We then, after completing these, have four more stages to do with four Robot Masters from Mega Man 4. We're going to start off with Mega Man 3 boss, Snake Man. You can see graphically, the game is very smooth looking, and especially for a Game Boy title, it runs rather well. The only problem with the sprites being so large and so detailed in this Game Boy version is there can be a lot of slowdown at times. Thankfully, we have both the charge ability as well as the slide ability in order to help us out while playing through. All the level designs are completely different from their original NES counterparts, however, elements such as the giant snake boss here are brought back. If you're very familiar with the NES versions of Mega Man, most of the enemies are pretty much the same, such as having to wait for this guy to open up his eye and launch out his weapon before you're actually able to hit him and do damage to him. For the giant snake head itself, just stay on the far left side this gives you the best opportunity to dodge the projectiles it fires when it opens up its mouth. Just keep jumping when you get the opportunity and just keep firing normal shots instead of trying to take time to do a charged up shot. These spring enemies can be annoying because when you get close to them, they end up springing, leaving their legs on the ground, and if you're just trying to go underneath of them, you can end up getting hit by it. Making his appearance in this game is also Eddie, or Flip Top. You can find him in a few levels, and by finding him, will give you a random item, whether or not it will be a, a big health thing, a big item replenishment, or sometimes even an extra life, like he did for me here. Wait for this guy to throw his weapon just like we have before, before you can go up to the ladder on the upper left side. Once you make it up this ladder, take out the enemy, then move yourself over to the right ladder, watching out so you don't get crushed by the thing moving up and down the ladder, then make a big jump over to the right so you can grab yourself an energy tank. Then head back over to the left and use the ladder to get up.
Be careful and take your time on these small platforms, watching out for the enemies in the air, as well as these bouncing guys, which can get pretty annoying. Thankfully, a full charged up shot will end up taking them out. When you make it over to the right, though, it's time to battle the first robot master of Mega Man 3 for Game Boy. Usually, I, I always walk in with a full charged up shot for this first battle. Launch it at him and you'll be able to hit him as long as you release it as soon as the battle begins, then continue to keep firing. When he gets over to the far left side, he's going to launch some snakes at you in the opposite direction. Jump over the snakes if you can and continue firing as he just moves back and forth. You don't have to worry about him ganging up on you because he'll always be moving from left to right and then from right to left. Keep firing as much as you can and you'll see that he doesn't do too much damage to you even when he runs into you, so you'll be able to drain his health, defeat Snake Man, and move on to the next level. Next up, we're going to be going to Gemini Man stage. For completing Snake Man's level though, you not only get his weapon, but you also get the Rush Coil. At the beginning of the stage, watch out for the Dragonfly enemies. They fly overhead, but when they get to the left side, they drop down, and whatever level they're at when they make contact with you, they'll end up charging straight at you. When you drop down here on the right side, watch out for the giant Matul down below. If you time your slide correctly, you'll be able to just slide underneath him without actually having to fight him. Here we once again have more dragonflies, and this time we have spikes below, so you'll once again have to be careful so you don't end up landing on them. Just like the NES version, there's these weird pods throughout Gemini Man stage that you'll have to break open in order to move yourself through the level. Every time you open one, one of these little guys ends up popping out of it and you'll have to destroy them before you can continue moving on. Thankfully, a full charged up shot can actually knock out a whole line of these pods, so that can definitely come to your advantage. Finally, after going through a ton of them, you'll make it to a ladder on the far right. The giant penguin robot, you'll have to jump up in order to hit the crank above him and take out the little robots that he ends up throwing out of his main stomach. If you can't get the timing quite down, there's a lot of enemies on screen, just take the damage and run through the enemy to try to get past him without taking too much damage because we're getting ready to get near the boss. In this last area of the stage, you once again have a bunch of the dragonflies, and this time singular platforms that you have to move through while trying to dodge them. When you do finally make it all the way over to the right though, we enter the boss door and it's time to battle Gemini Man. All the Robot Masters I find actually pretty easy to just beat normally with the Mega Buster in this one. However, Snake Man is his weakness, and if you use it, it'll instantly take out the clone, and then you just focus on the actual Gemini Man himself, and it only takes about 4 or 5 snakes total to take all his health away. The main strategy, though, is to stay in the middle of the screen, and this will give you a good opportunity to jump over both versions of Gemini Man, as they keep circling and jumping around the screen.
We now have only two Robot Masters left from the first four, and we're gonna start off by going to Shadow Man. Be very careful of the bomb platforms in this level, as they have a countdown clock on them. Once you jump on them, you'll activate the countdown clock, and when it hits zero, it'll end up blowing up. Here we have another one of those giant Matuls, and since it can't jump here, you'll actually have to jump up and take it out with charged shots. In this area, watch out for the grenade enemies and take out the domes when you see them. The screen will end up going dark when they appear, which can be a little bit distracting. In this area, just take your time platform to platform, taking out the parachuting robots, and being sure to clear the gap. Unfortunately, there's some of those robots we just dealt with in Gemini Man stage, especially the dragonflies. Down here, deal with one more of those giant Matuls using the jackhammer, and then go inside the Dr. Wily door to face off with Shadow Man. As the battle begins, Shadow Man will do a couple of short jumps and then throw out his shurikens. They'll go one up into an upper diagonal direction, and another one will come straight at you, which is easy to jump. Just like before, you'll have to hit him with your normal Mega Buster, will do a lot of damage. However, if you end up using the Gemini Lily Zerg, it does even more damage to him. After a few jumps and a few shurikens, he'll end up doing a slide maneuver on you. Just jump over quickly and get to the opposite side of the room from him and continue the assault. Next, we journey to the lair of Sparkman. Throughout Sparkman, you can expect a lot of electricity, so be very careful with these two things as they move back and forth on the floor and the ceiling, because once in a while they'll end up doing an electric spark between them and you'll have to wait for the opportunity to jump over them and get past. Here we have another one of those giant Matuls, just do a few charged up shots, and if you're lucky, you should be able to take him out with a bunch of the shots before he ends up getting all the way over to the right and hit you. Take out these enemies as soon as they appear, because after a few seconds they will throw a projectile at you. Here, we can take out the giant mat if you want to, and then use the rush coil in order to jump up so you can grab yourself the energy tank. These platforms with the arrows on them will start going towards the ceiling with the spikes once you land on them. The game ends up slowing down here, so it ends up being quite easy to get off the platform before they reach the ceiling. This area can be a little bit tricky because when you drop down, there's spikes lining the left and right walls, as well as the bomb platforms. If you time your falling correctly, you actually can just dive in and out of all of them, except usually for the very last few bombs. If you land on a bomb, just quickly get off of it, but be sure not to jump off too far so you hit any of the spikes on the sides. Thank <laughs> you. 
Stay on the far right side and jump over his projectile in an open area so you don't jump up over the projectile and into the spikes. Take out the last enemy and then enter the chamber to do battle with Sparkman. When the battle begins against Sparkman, he'll end up jumping to that center platform and launch a projectile at you. Charge up your shots and launch him at him when he's not charging up. After throwing that first projectile, he'll jump again and then shoot out a spread shot. Stay far away from him during this segment so you can end up getting in between the boards. His weakness ends up being Shadow Man, and it only takes a couple of those Shadow Blades in order to actually kill Spark Man, so you can move on to the next level. After completing the first four stages, we now go to kind of a halfway point stage. We get to see a nice scene of Dr. Wily's castle in the background with Mega Man landing nearby. This stage isn't long, but it's a little bit tricky because it has those disappearing and reappearing platforms. Also, when you land on these platforms, they immediately open up, so you'll have to jump off of them immediately after landing on them. After only a couple though, you end up running into a giant Susie. These things are quite annoying as they move back and forth and also move up and down. The more you fight it though, the faster it gets, so keep charging up your regular shots or you can use the spark ability in order to do a little bit more damage. Once you defeat it though, it ends up dropping health and you can move on to another room where you'll find a pod that takes you to the next set of four Robot Master rooms. We now can select from four more levels, Dive Man, Skull Man, Drill Man, and Dust Man. And we're going to start off by going to Dust Man's level first. Watch out for the shield enemies, they're a staple in the Mega Man series, as you'll only be able to hit them from behind. Thankfully, they can only move so far over to one side before they end up turning around and going the opposite direction, which is your opportunity to take them out. Watch out for enemies that end up popping out of the pits here, and you'll have to hit them before you end up trying to attempt to make the jump over, or you'll run the risk of running into them and going right down into a pit. These giant enemies can be a pain and they do a lot of damage and take a bunch of shots to take out. If you can use one of the other enemies to your advantage, you can end up getting hit by them and run past the giant enemy. I find the Matuls hilarious during this game because they end up coming to life firing and do a little spin before going back down. Here we have to deal with a giant crusher trying to get rid of us. You'll have to destroy the trash blocks in order to slide through so you can avoid getting crushed. Thankfully, just like the pods from Gemini Man stage, a full charged up shot will get rid of a line of them, but be sure to destroy enough of them so you don't accidentally run into one of them at the very end and get crushed that way. Once again, watch out for the enemies in the pits, and then take out this giant enemy sitting on the platform here from a distance. His projectile moves rather quickly, but it'll just go over your head if you're standing on the far left platform.
When you make it up here, take out the giant shield enemy and then get out the rush coil. Throw it into the middle of the floor with the spikes and then use it to bounce over. Then use it again on the left side so you can get up to the ladder above. Here you have a choice of two pits. Either one leads to the same set of rooms, it's just whatever side you prefer to go down. After one more shield enemy, we finally make it to the layer of Dustman. He'll end up trying to suck you in towards him, and you won't be able to damage him during this. When he stops doing that, you can hit him with a full charged up shot, then jump over the trash cube that he ends up throwing out at you. Unfortunately, Dustman's ability that he's weak against is Drillman's ability, which we don't have yet. Thankfully, a full charged up blaster shot does a lot of damage. As you can see, Sparkman's ability, which is the last one we got, won't do any damage to Dustman. After completing Dustman's level, we not only get his ability, but we also get the Rush Jet. We now move on to Skullman's level. Watch out for the bats hanging along the ceiling at the beginning of the level so you don't end up falling down to the spikes below. You'll have to move sometimes to the edge of a platform in order to get the bat to actually come to life and start trying to attack you. Thankfully over here if you like you can slide under the bats as well as one of those shield enemies to get to the ladder on the right. Here we run into Eddie again and this time he gives us one of those big item replenishments. A full charged up shot will take out one of these skeleton enemies instantly, before they're actually even able to throw out their bone projectile. Here watch out for the spike enemies that are raining down from the ceiling. You'll have to use your rush coil here in order to get to the platform above. You'll then use it again over here in order to make it over to this platform before being able to go down. Down here, use your full charged up shot to take out the skeleton enemies before trying to jump over to their platforms. When you make it over to the end, take out the last skeleton enemy, you can enter the layer of Skull Man. Skull Man uses a shield of skulls around him in order to block your projectiles, but it only lasts a few seconds and you'll be able to get a full charged in blast 
in order to do a lot of damage to him. So just do your best to have him not land on you and time your shots correctly, and then you can use Dustman's ability if you need to in order to do a lot of damage to him fast. Next up, we're traveling the Dive Man's level. Since this is an underwater level for the most part, you do have those underwater physics of falling slower and being able to jump higher, so be very careful with sealing spikes. Watch out for the giant whale enemy, the missiles it fires out actually do move rather quickly. And I have to admit the fluent animation of moving over that giant whale from the NES version over to the Game Boy version, it ends up looking rather good. In this area, be very careful of the Matuls that you can end up taking them out and don't jump up too high or fall down too fast on any of the spikes. When you dive down into the water again, we have to take out another one of the giant whales. Staying on the left side gives you a better opportunity to dodge some of the missiles it fires out. He also has missiles that will come down from the ceiling. Just stand in between two of them so they don't hit you on their way down. Once you take him over, do a big jump over, but not too high up, because right as soon as you scroll over to the next screen, there's going to be spikes in your way. Here, do some short jumps in between the spikes while taking out the Manta Ray robot that tries to fight you. Here's one of the tougher areas of the stage as the water level will keep going up and down, and sometimes on top of the water there will be spikes. In order to of course get the full benefit of the water jump, you'll have to jump while the water is at its highest. Just be careful that when the water lowers and there's spikes that you don't get caught underneath of them. After slowly taking your time through that whole room, you'll finally get through it, and be very careful on the last set of spikes down here, and then drop down, you'll see the wily door. Activate the two mines, and then back away so they don't explode and end up hitting you, then go into the room to face off against Dive Man. When facing off against Dive Man, he ends up doing a tornado-like move towards you. Be sure to watch out for that, and then when he fires out his missiles, they start homing in on you going around the room. Do your best to just keep jumping around and cause them to keep going in circles and not actually run into you. At any point, you can use Skull Man's shield ability in order to take out the missiles as well as do a lot of damage to Dive Man himself. Next up, we have the last Robot Master to face off with in this game, and that is Drill Man. Watch out for the shield enemy near the beginning of the level, 
and be careful of a couple of hits near the early beginning. Over here, you'll have platforms with spikes coming out of the top and bottom, and after a few seconds, it'll rotate so that they're on the left and right sides. You'll obviously have to wait for them to be on those sides so you actually can stand on the platform itself. Watch out for the two bats here and then drop down. Immediately, if you land on the platforms, they will open up and they will cause you to fall. Just be careful and try to jump off of them quickly. Here, once again, if you're very fast, you can grab yourself not one, but two E-Tanks before continuing on. In this segment, you're going to have rocks falling out of these tubes. Just be careful and don't let them hit you on the head when they drop out. Then use the bomb platforms so that you can make it across to the platform on the right side. Here you can slide underneath, but just be very careful that the platform with the spikes are on the up and down parts there, so that when you slide underneath, you don't end up running into the spike. After just a little bit more, you'll end up making it to the lair against Drill Man. Drill Man is pretty easy to jump over, but he moves rather quickly. He'll consistently fire out drills that you'll have to jump over so you can continue launching in your big blast. After a while, he'll drill underground. Keep moving on the top part so that when he pops out, he doesn't end up hitting you when he drills out. Charged up shots work well, but at any point if you need it, you can use Dive Man's missiles to home in on him and take him out. With him defeated, we now go to the Dr. Wily levels themselves. We start off by running into Dr. Wily. After a few seconds though, he'll back away and now we have to battle with the Robot Killer. After Punk runs away, you can then drop down the hole he created so you can actually make it to the lair to face off with him. Punk ends up being one of the coolest of the robot killers and ends up being actually Kiji and Afune's favorite. Start off with a full charged off blast at him in order to hit him, then jump over him when he rolls across the screen. When he makes it on the left side, he'll then pop out of his ball form and start firing projectiles at you. Do your best to either jump over or slide underneath the projectiles, launching in a few shots when you can. Thankfully though, it doesn't take too many full charged up blasts to drain all of Punk's health.
It's now time for the final level of the game, Dr. Wily's Castle. And as to be expected, pretty much all the enemies we've been facing throughout the game will make an appearance during this stage. When you drop down here, you'll have two of the giant shield enemies. Stay on the ladder at the very top until they face the other direction, then take out one and get to the pit on the right side. Here, I suggest taking out the cannon first before trying to make an attempt to the platform. Just be sure to immediately jump off the platform so that when it opens up, you don't end up falling down. Over here with all the spikes, get out the rust jet and ride it in the middle of the two spike walls so that you can make it over to the right side. Just keep sliding here so that you're able to avoid all the spikes on the ceiling, then climb up the ladder on the far right once you reach a dead end. Do your best not to get crushed while climbing up the ladder, while also taking out the enemies on the right side in the coves if you want to. It's really hard to make it up this ladder without actually taking out one or both of the shield enemies. When you make it up into this room, you have both the floor and ceiling moving, with the ceiling crushing you and the floor having spikes alongside of it. Time it so that you can get into an opening without spikes that'll come out from the bottom, as well as not get crushed from the ceiling. After taking out this enemy, if you do need some boost in health, use the Rush Coil in order to get above. Then drop down, take out this enemy, and get ready for a rematch against the giant Suzu we fought earlier on in the game. It's pretty much the same exact battle we fought the first time, though this time it can actually jump, which can be a little bit annoying. Just get underneath of it when it does its jump overhead, and continues on to the right side. Just like before, use your charged up full blast, or you can actually use Sparkman's ability if you need to. Drop down the ladder, take out a few metals so that you can make it over to another ladder. When you drop down though, be very careful of the buzzsaw moving back and forth on the platform. Every time you land on the platform, it of course starts moving faster, similar to other enemies we've seen in Mega Man. In this area, just be very careful that you're able to make it to the edge of the platform before jumping so you don't accidentally fall down into the pit.
take out the last enemy and then you'll finally make it into the boss layer of Dr. Wily. It starts off with a one-on-one -on -one battle against this giant ship. Use a full charged up blast at it and hit it in its eyes. It'll fire two missiles out when it lands, but they're easily able to dodge as long as you can get to the right side of the screen. Just keep going back and forth from the left to the right side every time he slightly raises up and you'll be able to avoid all damage. After waiting for what seems like forever, the top will actually explode, exposing Dr. Wily. For the second form, switch over to the move we got by defeating Punk. It throws out this little ball of razors that you can end up hitting Dr. Wily directly on as it goes in an arcing pattern. Just move over to the left side every time you fire so you can dodge some of the projectiles he ends up shooting out. Thankfully, the projectiles he throws out really don't do too much damage, so as long as you have about half health going into this form, you shouldn't have too much trouble. Once you deliver, though, the final hit to Dr. Wily, you can sit back and enjoy the ending to Mega Man 3 for the Nintendo Game Boy. After we get to see the destruction of Dr. Wily's castle, we then get to see Mega Man walk by while we have a roll call for all the enemies we face during the course of the game. Because they showcase every single enemy you fought throughout the game, this ends up being a rather long ending overall. Mega Man 3 for Game Boy is still rather easy in my opinion compared to its NES counterpart. I find the Mega Buster fully charged up ends up being more than enough to take out all the enemies as well as the Robot Masters themselves. They also seem to be a little bit slowed down so it takes a little bit less effort to actually dodge their attacks. However, the graphics end up being very good and it ends up being a better game than Mega Man 2 for Game Boy.
After we see all the enemies shown, we then have Mega Man staying on the edge of a cliff looking over the world that's now safe, and then we have our Thank You For Playing presented by Capcom screen. And with that, it's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.